So good morning and welcome again in this information session about the Austrian Academy of Science JESH program, which is the Joint Excellence in Science in Humanities program. The webinar is meant for potential candidates from Latin America and the Caribbean in all fields of knowledge. My name is Charlotte and together with my colleague Victoria, we represent your access in Latin America and the Caribbean. I'm very happy to welcome Leonardo Dallagnol, who's a um, professor at the Federal University of Maranhão in Brazil, and is also a, a program fellow. So I would like to thank you, Leonardo, for your this initiative, and I let you share your screen while I introduce you in more details. So Leonardo is professor and researcher at the Federal University of Maranhão in uh, Brazil. He's member of the postgraduation course of health and environment and of the environmental science and technology program. Leonardo works on biotechnology and he did his PhD in Europe with uh, Mahis Klodowska Curie grant. Leonardo, uh, the floor is yours. So, yeah, all good. Okay, thank you, Charlotte, for the invitation. And um, I'm very glad to be here. I'll talk about this uh, opportunity of, of uh, international cooperation. So, as Charlotte said, I'm a professor at the Federal University of Maranhão, and uh, I'm a JESH, Jesh fellow. And uh, I, I'm participating in the, in the program uh, last year, I sent a proposal, and uh, I will travel to Austria on the beginning of the 2023. And um, I I asked Charlotte if she, she wanted uh, to do some um, some talk about this program because it's opening again until December 6, and it's a good opportunity to cooperations uh, to foster cooperation between Latin America and um, Austria. So as Charlotte told. Uh, the Austrian Academy of Science Joint Excellence in Science and Amenity programs, uh, also called the JESH program. Here it's the it's the symbol of the Austrian Academy of Science, yeah, in uh, in um, German, and it's uh, organized. This program is organized by the Austrian Academy of Science and it's uh, with the funding of the Federal Ministry of Education, Science and Research from Austria. And uh, we'll talk about uh, some general information, some, uh, some general information about the program. How is the application process? Uh, they, they have some uh, model documents that you have to follow. And how is the selection process done? And at the end, I will talk about some practical tips. So how, how did I prepare my, my, my proposal? How did I, I find the partners and uh, that could help you in your uh, proposal uh, writing? Yeah. So first, talking about the the program. The program is um, it's uh, involves 23, 53 countries. Yeah, in four areas of the world. Yeah. So we have in Asia, East Europe, and and uh, Middle East and North Africa, and also in Latin America. So in Latin America, we we, it includes almost all Latin America now, and the continental Latin America from Mexico to Argentina and uh, Cuba also, just some countries from the Caribbean that are not included, but uh, as you can see, all countries listed in green here, they are included and then of course the French Guiana is not included, yeah. So it's, um, it's a good opportunity. Uh, something, uh, some uh, points that are important to 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 say is that uh, it's all fields are eligible from as the name says humanity and science so it's not directed to any field so if you are from uh, sociology from social science from engineering from molecular science life science you can you can propose a uh, 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 projects of corporations yeah it's um, one thing that's important to highlight is that uh, you have to have a maximum of 10 years after your PhD complexion, complexion. So after you, you defended your PhD, it has to be a maximum of 10 years when you send the project, yes, the proposal. 
So for example, I sent uh, last year, I was with eight years of, um, uh, nine years of PED completion. So I could participate. And it's important that uh, you have, you are affiliated with an academic institution until the beginning of the just fellowship. So why I say that? Because uh, it takes a little bit of time, we'll see, between the, the proposal submission and uh, the proposal approval and until you get to travel to, to Austria. So I would say that you have to consider that you will be affiliated with your home institutions at least one year and a half after the, the, the beginning of the writing proposal because uh, it takes at least one year to to have everything approved yeah and uh the objectives of the of the the, the program is to increase and to improve reinforce the research landscape at the target country and to promote the brain circulation we have um two kinds of jash um Josh, Josh uh, fellowships. You have Josh income and Josh outcome. So, uh, Josh income is the when, uh, uh, for example, a researcher from Latin America travels to Austria to spend uh, some time there doing the cooperation. And Josh outcome is when uh, an Austrian academic travels to a partner uh, country to to, prom to promote the the cooperation. So even if you have more than 10 years of PhD complexion, uh, you have defend your PhD, you could still think about uh, doing a, a JASH outcome. If you have a partners you can want to bring from Austria to your department. So it's also a, a possibility. Yeah, I will talk more, more deeply about the JASH in, out, income. So when you want to go to Austria, so you have you can go to Austria in three types of uh, of uh, institutions, yeah, I will just show you here. You can go to universities, yeah. So you can go to the Academy of Science and you can go to pub uh, publicly funded research institutions. So about the universities, you have 22 universities in Austria, yeah. Uh, I'm showing here, it, this is a web page of the Federal Ministry of Education, Science and Research. And uh, you have uh, usually two types of university in Austria. You have the general university, for example, University of Graz, and you also have, uh, for example, Graz University of Technology or TU Graz, that they call uh, usually TU, it's Technological University or University of Technology. So usually the cities they have, for example, the TU Vienna and the University of Vienna, for example. So they have a more engineering, more applied side at the university of technological universities and have the general university so sometimes if you look for uh, uh, some partners in in the grass university for example you do not find it because they probably will be on the university of technology of grass the tu grass university so uh, i i would say like a first tip i i give you is that when you look for a partner uh, be aware that uh, sometimes in the same city you have this differentiation between the technological university and the general university that uh, depending on the field you are trying to, to work, uh, it can be one of them. Yeah. And uh, the other, the, the other, the other type of uh, public fund research institutions you can have, you could, uh, could you have also in the website of the, of the federal uh ministry of education science and research you also have some uh contacts and reports that have a list of researchers uh for example as the institute of science technology of austria the institute of meteorology and geodynamics the geological surveys of austria the austrian institute of technology the silicon austria labs so also have the contact point that patrick spencer judge that you could uh, email asking some uh, directions of some specific uh, research institutions that you could do the partnership. Yeah. And uh, regarding the. So you also could go to the. 
to the Academy of Science. They also do some research. Also on the website of the JASH program, you can find more information about uh, the, the Austrian Academy of Science. And uh, also they could bring someone from the, to your Academy of Science, uh, depending on the, if it's a JASH outcome. And uh, what the program, the other program covers, it's uh, important to, to say that it doesn't cover research funds, so you do not pay, for example, for consumables, equipments, nothing like that. So they, they cover the travel costs as a reimbursement. So that's important to know that you have to buy your, your travel tickets to go to Austria, uh, but they will give you full reimbursement as soon as you arrive there. Uh, they will cover your living expenses for one to six months. So the, the time, time frame that you can work in Austria is from one to six months. Uh, and the fellowship, it's a flat rate of 2,700 uh, 2, euros per month. So it's, uh, it's a good uh, amount of, of uh, money that you live in any, any city in Austria, if you want to go. For this year, the submission deadline is December 6th. So it's a bit um, short deadline because I will show you the application progress. It's it's process, it, they take a bit of time to prepare the proposal, okay? And um, uh, about the application process, you will need, uh, it's important to say that all the, the proposals and all documents should be written in English, okay? So uh, you need a CV, in the in the list of publications, uh, I recommend that you that the people that want you to apply use the Europass model of CV. I will show you uh, a model Europass model uh, uh, curriculum, and um, you need a confirmation of employment affiliation in the country of origin. So it's uh, they uh, the website of Josh program. They have a model document. For example, in my case, I'm, uh, I had to fill the document and send you the dean of the of the university to sign it so depending on your university it can be fast or you can take some time. some university need one week or two to get the, the signature of the dean so uh, if you are already thinking submitting you should firstly talk to your dean or the 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 ex cabinet to to see this this signature in, in, in a uh, feasible time frame and um, you need the statement by the host institution. And this statement, I'll show you the document after. It's um, it has to to fill some some questions that they they have about your proposal, how it will impact your uh, your career, and how it will be impact the cooperation. So you, uh, as I said, you need to prepare this in advance. So usually, what I, I recommend is that you prepare the, the project proposal. Yeah, so you have to talk with your partner there, prepare the, the project proposal. And with the project proposal, you will uh, fill in the statement by the host institution because some of the questions will be answered in the project proposal, okay? Uh, the project proposal, you, you need to prepare a separate document uh, as an abstract, one page abstract with the, the, all the information about the proposal. In the project proposal, you need a, a, a specific document without the abstract that will be separated with the general aims that you put the state of research, yeah, a, a review of the literature, the research questions and methodology that you use in your project, the reasons for the research stay and the intended cooperation as well as the expected personal benefit and the anticipated long-term effect. This, this part is very important because this is one of the differentials that will make your proposal more appealing. For example, if you are if you are proposing something that is already done in a country and that it's well established in your country, so, so it's not interesting for the for the, the the evaluator to see that it's something that is it's very common in your country. But for example, if it's a, a, a research area that it's established in Austria, but it's not established in your country or in your region of the country. So it would be interesting that you could come and uh, learn the or, or exchange with complementary synergies, for example, and um, it will improve your career perspective. It will create a long-term effect of cooperation between Austria and your country. So this kind of, uh, of, of uh, 
uh, uh, proposal building, it's important, not only the scientific excellence, but also thinking about the cooperation aspects and the career aspects of the proposal, yeah. Uh, also the rationality for the duration of stay, so you can ask for one month, two months, three months, four months, so it should make sense, for example, uh, the amount of work you are proposing that you develop, if you are asking for one month, but the amount of work is too much, or if you are proposing uh, too less and the amount of time it's it's too much for example you are doing saying that you're doing something that should be done in one month and you're asking for three four months of, of fellowship so this should be also considered and the bibliography also it's important and um, the application online form as i said you, you have a specific um web page uh, to 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 propose i will change here and the application forms, online forms, you have to fill, for example, it's your name, your academic degree, gender, the date of birth, email address, phone numbers, the postal address, the home institutions, yeah, the department, the head of department, the postal code and everything, website, some personal details like citizenship, employment status, your educations, yeah, when you got your doctoral degree, the research project title, research area, this has, should be according to the this list from Austria statistics, the research topics, the host institution, the host department, the, the responsible of the, at the institution, host institution, the duration of the funding, and then upload the, the documents, the CV, the home institution confirmation and the statement of the, by the host institution should be uh, compiled as one document and you will upload here. Then the project proposal, that's between five and 10 pages, it's not a big proposal. Yeah, it's a, it's a normal proposal size and a, a separated project abstract. And then everything is done, you can send, okay? So this is more or less the, the, the structure for the application. Uh, the selection criteria for for the proposals is first the scientific quality and its relevance to the field of research. So also, uh, as I said, how your proposal uh, improving in the field. Yeah? Uh, for example, in my in my case, uh, I I'm, I have experience with uh, cyanobacteria and microalgae genome mining and uh, genome annotation and um, also diversity studies of, of, of free living cyanobacteria. So we, we are starting some research in microbiomes and metagenomics field. And uh, also we are starting to, to try to work with uh, lichens. So uh, I looked into some partners in Austria that already uh, had some uh, research uh, in lichens. So cyanolichens specifically, but in, in, more specifically, but in, in general, lichens. And uh, we are looking for people that had experience with bioinformatic analysis, with metagenomics and microbiomics, because this is something that we are starting to do here. And uh, I find a, found, found a partner in the TU Grass, in, uh, in Grass University of Technology, uh, that were uh, specialists in this kind of, of uh, of research. They also had some specialists in lichens, for example, but he was more a specialist in physiology and, and biology of lichen in general. And I wanted someone that was more experienced in, in microbiomics and uh, metagenomics analysis. So we propose uh, to do a, a comparison between our free living cyanobacteria that we had the, the data with there data from uh, symbiotic cyanobacteria. So we want you to compare the, the, the metagenomics, the, the, the community composition, and which uh, tools we can use for, for microbiome and metagenomic analysis. As I have experience in, in free living cyanobacteria, they have experience with uh, symbiotic cyanobacteria. That's uh, this synergy that I will try to uh, improve their uh, studies in free living cyanobacteria, and I will learn more about the, the studies of symbiotic cyanobacteria. So it's this, uh, it's a new field you have uh, of, of core occurrence. And, and so we are trying to improve 
the knowledge about this this what is different between the free living and the and the symbiotic cell bacteria yeah and the anticipated long term effects for example we are we are thinking about some um, european uh, proposal calls for example biodiverse plus and uh ELAC, uh, europe 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 latin america uh, corporations calls so we already put in some perspectives of, of participating in this type of calls, uh, in this kind of studies. So on the proposal, we already highlighted this uh, possibility. And the third point is the candidate academic qualification. So also it has to uh, be uh, adequate to the kind of proposal you are, you are doing. Yeah. As I said, the results, it takes a little bit of time. For example, in 2021, uh, the call ended in May. So we received the results in December. So it's six to seven months. Um, usually around six months is the common. So if it ends in December, you'll probably receive the, the results in June 2023. So the, the program will start probably in August, September of 2023. They the, the arrive, we could arrive. So after you you receive the the acceptance uh, you are approved your proposal is approved you receive an email so to confirm that you're still willing to participate in the program and after you receive the email you have some procedures to to go through so you can can get to to Austria yeah <clears throat> so some tips that's are important to to highlight yeah uh, first it's seek a partner in advance because uh, I will show you the proposal uh, next, but um, you have to answer in the project disposal, you have to prepare a good proposal. You have to answer the career perspective, the project perspective, cooperation perspective. So you cannot write uh, a good proposal if you have not spoken to your partner adequately. So the first thing I did in, uh, when I uh, submitted my proposal, I, I looked for partners, for potential partners in Ausha. I found one that was that was very interesting for me. I emailed them, and uh, after they replied, we had a, a, a Zoom meeting, and then we discussed the idea of the proposal. How could what would be interesting for both of us? How could we work? How could we to develop the, the proposal idea? And uh, then I prepared the proposal, and then I sent them. They okay, it's, it's everything agreed, and then we 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 submitted the proposal. So it took two weeks to three weeks to prepare uh, a good proposal, yeah. Uh, it's important to say that uh, uh, one thing, the, uh, the fellowship will be paid, uh, one of the demands of the fellowship is that they will pay you in an Austrian bank account. So uh, after I was selected, I, I received all the, the documentations and uh, I, I contacted the, the embassy in Brasilia uh, in Brazil, the capital of Brazil, and uh, they told me, because as a Brazilian, I don't need a visa to stay up to, to three months in Europe, yeah, so I could stay to up to three months without visa, but uh, they told me as I need to open a bank account in Austria, I would need a, a visa, type C visa, uh, to open the bank account, so even if you are going to stay one or two months and you are allowed to stay up to three months in Nausha uh, uh, as a tourist, uh, it's recommended that you get a visa so you can open the bank account without problems, yeah? Because they will only pay you the fellowship after you have the bank account open. So you have to arrive in Nausha and go to the bank with your visa and all the documents to open the bank account. If you are going to stay uh up to 90 days uh you need a type c visa yeah and uh, if you're going to stay uh more than the 90 days until six months yeah so between four months and six months you need a type d visa so uh it depends on the amount of time you have to seek that the documentation is a bit different between, depending on the type of visa you're going to to ask okay uh it's important to say that the the visa is free or Free of charge for researchers so you will you ask for the visa but you don't have to pay for the visa in Austria researchers are extended from the visa charge fees uh, but when you ask for example for uh, uh, the invitation letter for your host uh, 
uh, at the Austrian University or the Austrian Research Institute, it has some, you have to pay attention because, uh, for example, at least type C visa that I, I got, uh, the invitation letter has to be well, uh, uh, very clearly detailed that you are going as a researcher for a research visit, and it needs to have your full name, your date of birth, and your passport number. So uh, you have to ask them with all the details. For example, I, I forgot to ask for my passport number. I had to ask them to prepare another invitation letter before the, the visa interview, yeah? So also the, the, the visa, you need to go personally, at least in Brazil, uh, you need to go to the Brazilian embassy. The Austria has a lot of consulates in Brazil, in different cities, not all capitals, but state capitals, but they have uh, in Sao Paulo, in Rio, in different uh, cities in Brazil. Uh, although the visa, at least until now, until this last month I went there, they were only issuing visa at the embassy. So you have to go personally at Brasilia to ask for the visa. To, and you have to book a meeting. They have a... a a specific web page of at the embassy website. So you go to, to the embassy website and then you, you can book a, a, a meeting. It's not complicated, yeah. Uh, the, the documentations that in Brazil for up to 90 days, you need a form that they have this, uh, the form to, to fill with uh, all the personal information. Uh, you need to have, um, uh, booked place to stay or invitation letter from someone from Austria. So uh, when you go to the interview, you already have to have a, a hotel booked or a Airbnb booked or invitation letter from someone to Austria saying that you stay at their homes. And also that's very important. When you go to the visa interview, you also already need, it if it's a, a, a type C visa, you, you already need to have to uh, buy, bought your flight ticket. So for example, I bought my flight ticket uh, at the end of October because I had the visa interview and uh, I will travel in February. So I will only get reimbursed for the, for the flight tickets when I get there. So you have to think about it. The, the recommended time frame for the visa, you have to ask between one month and three months more or less. So it's, it's very, it doesn't take a lot of time. The visa is very simple uh the process yeah you need a passport yeah a valid passport uh, uh, uh insurance for the for the trip with uh, the normal insurance you 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 take for for travels to europe with 30,000 euros of 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 coverage and the as i said the the book of the hotel or uh, Airbnb or invitation letter. Uh, you, it's recommended that you take your, when you go to the interview, we can ask for the Austrian Academy, uh, a letter that you, a confirmation letter that they give you that you receive a scholarship or a fellowship during your stay there. But it's also recommended that you take your, uh, for example, your your paycheck and all the, comp all, uh, money that you you can have like bank account uh, I don't know how to say this in English but uh, the imposto de renda it's uh, the the income tax that you pay every year yeah uh, as I said you need a, a air ticket both ways yeah and uh, and uh, as I said, it's it's free of charge for researchers, but it has to be very clearly in the invitation letter that you are going for a research visit. Uh, visit, yeah. Um, so about the the proposal, about the the proposal, I'm showing you here. Uh, here's the the proposal I prepared at the time. Yeah, so. As I said, uh, state of research, one page or two pages of state of research, um, describing the area, the research area you are proposing to work. And uh, then the methodology, for example, here the methodology we propose, taxonomic analysis, functional analysis, and reason for the research day and the intended cooperation as well, the expected personal benefit, the newest of the cooperations anticipated longer facts, usually one 
one paragraph for each or two paragraph maximum. Impact on the field of the research in the applicant's country of origin. The rationality of the duration of stays. So, so a working plan, but a very simple working plan. Yes, yeah, picking which parts and then the activities per, per month. Yeah. So, and then the bibliography, the reference. So it's it's more or less ten pages. Yeah, maximum. So you have to be aware uh, that's maximum ten pages. So we cannot pass this size uh, of of projects. Yeah. I, I would like to thank the Dr. Johannes, Johannes Conteny, that is the representative of international relations at the Austrian Academy of Science. He's very, they are very kind. So he always answer all the emails I sent with all the questions. They were very uh, friendly and uh, tried to help the maximum they could with everything I asked them. And also at the embassy in Brasilia, the, the representative that's usually reply to, to the contact emails is Thaisa Alicio, and she's very kind also. And she she helped me a lot. She answered all my, my doubts. And uh, for example, in my case, uh, I'm from San Luis, so I went in a, uh, in a flight at the early morning. I arrived at Brasilia at uh, 7.30, and I had booked at 10, p 10 a.m. Uh, a meeting with her, and I presented all the documentations and uh, and the flight ticket I bought at the time there, and then at the she and I returned to to San Luis at the end of the day at 10 p.m. So they they tried to they returned me my my passport with the visa the same day. Usually they take a, a few days to to process depending on the amount of 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 visa request. So depending on the time of the year, for example, when you are approaching the uh, the school time from August, September, so July or June, usually they have more work, so it takes more time. So it's usually if you go there in this period of the year, they will ask you to leave the passport and then you send you by, by, by mail to your place. So uh, if you are considering to, to get really in short time and you are not living near Brasilia, you should uh, be aware that it can take more than one day to get your visa. In my case, I got in the same day, but they were not so uh, uh, busy. So they, as I said, I, I had to return the same day. They tried to return the, the passport in the same day. They did it, but it's, it's, they cannot guarantee that they will do it in the same day. Yeah, so I want to ask uh, uh, to acknowledge and, and uh, my, the support of Professor Tomislav Sernava and Tio Guaras and Gabriel Berg they also were very, very friendly uh, since the first contact. They ev did everything they could to support me. Um, every time I ask a document and I ask their support to, to fill some, uh, some documents, they were very, very friendly. So I cannot emphasize how, how they were uh, helpful and then they had support for this. Thanks a lot. It was very useful and practical, and we have also questions very practical. If you allow me, I will give you a word about uh, your access and how we can also support candidates, and then we answer the questions, okay, in okay. orally. I will read them for you. So for those who don't know your access, uh, we are a European Commission initiative to promote researchers' mobility and cooperation between Latin America in the Caribbean and Europe, in our case, because we are Euraxis, Latin America and the Caribbean. But um, let me show you, Euraxis is um, a wolf, a big family. We have colleagues in 43 uh, European countries and uh, worldwide in nine locations, among other Latin America, but we have colleagues in many Asian country, Africa, uh, Australia, North America, and Latin America and the Caribbean. So we are all coordinated by the European Commission and we support brain circulation, meaning we support you when you want to go to Europe to do a PhD, to do a postdoc or frontier research. And we also support your collaboration because we know that we need, you need to work all together as researchers so we can address the main challenges 
we are all facing. So Eurexis doesn't fund the, the mobility, but we provide information and support services. The European Commission funds mobility and member states of the European uh, Union and uh, Latin American countries do fund mobility. So what we do is to try to gather all the information and um, offer it in a consolidated manner for you. As your access lag, what we do is again to inform you about the career opportunities in Europe and cooperation possible. So we send alerts when a call is open, either by the European Commission or also by member states. We offer information sessions to explain how the calls work, um, how, what are the eligibility criteria and so on. And we also organize training, mainly on European funding, um, such as the Marie Sklodowska Curie Actions and the European Research Council. Um, so as I told you, there are plenty of other sources of funding beside the European Commission. One of them is the Austrian Academy of Science that we've just uh, talked about. But you can find many of the opportunities that are offered on your access jobs and funding portal that I'm sharing on your screen, which is the first pillar of your access and where institutions that hire researchers publish their opportunities for free. So this is a, an important tool for you. But on your access, you can so also find um, tools to test your skills and develop new skills in the career development pillar. You can also find partners. So it's important in the case of this um, JESH call, you need a host institution, you need somebody to work with. So you can use your access partnering tool to identify a suitable host for you in Austria. Then when you are ready to cross the ocean, our colleagues all over Europe are at your disposal to provide you with information. For example, uh, today, um, Leonardo did part of your access Austria job, but he gave you hints on the visa, but you may want, wonder how does the social protection works in Austria or what happens if you get sick there, etc. So this is the kind of information our colleagues can provide you with. And uh, in the case of, of Austria, I, I'll show you the portal in a minute. Um, then just to finish with the your access portal, your access worldwide is the fifth pillar, the one where your access lack sits. And then if you want to use all the functionalities that your access offers, it's free. You can create an account and then you receive notifications. You can publish your CV. You can get access to the online training tools, etc. So about your access Austria, I just share the, the, um, their website. They provide information about people who want to live in Austria, meaning to undertake a stay, being short or long term. Then you need practical information for you and for your family if you travel with your family. Um, they also provide information about working in Austria, how does it work, and then when you go back to your countries all over the world, they help you also with information, administrative information. So uh, I leave you our contacts from your access, Latin America and the Caribbean. We identify many opportunities. Now we have the pleasure to listen uh, about the, the opportunities in Austria, but then you, we identify many others. You can follow us on Facebook and on Twitter. We have pages in Spanish and in Portuguese, and all the events that we organize are recorded and available on YouTube. Okay, so do not hesitate to contact us also to, to ask questions and we'll be happy to, to help you with these mobility and, and, and cooperation projects. Now, uh, Leonardo, about the, the information you shared, everybody is very positive and it's been very useful. Uh, we have several questions here. First of all, could you please share the link that you showed on your presentation to find the different institutions in Austria, the different uh, universities and the Academy of Science. 
I will share here. I also in my presentation I placed the link. So yes. I have all the links of, of websites and uh, the documents uh, where I found them. And so Leonardo, about the universities you contacted, how, how, how much time did it take uh, for uh, them to answer? And, and when should uh, the, the candidate start this? Yeah, uh, as it's December 6th, the deadline, I would say like uh, tomorrow. <laughs> like, yeah. uh, at least in my experience, they 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 replied uh for example in professor berg gabriel berg that i'm go i'm going to visit uh i i looked for many professors i i choose one gabriel berg and then i send an email to professor berg and i send i sent an email to three or four pre, uh, per, uh, principal investigators of her group and one of them replied like in a, a few days it was Tom's love and then we booked a meeting and we discussed and then uh, he briefed Professor Berg, uh, that's very, very busy as a head of the department and everything. So uh, it took like uh, two weeks to build the proposal because like we booked a meeting, uh, we discussed the idea, then I wrote the proposal, I sent to them, we suggested some modifications. And then uh, um, I, I would say at least two weeks to, to build a good proposal. But it depends on the professor because uh, as I said, as I showed you, it's it's not so simple. For example, I already submitted to Coimbra Group uh, uh, call that it's also for visiting. It has different time frames and everything. But for Coimbra Group, it's one page proposal, so we, it's very quick to prepare. But in this case, you need to to explain what's the novelty, what's the impact on your career. So it's a bit more uh, uh, detailed the, the proposal. So it takes more time. Yeah. Also, you need your, your dean signature. So I know that some some universities they take like one or two weeks to get the mm -hmm. signature in a document. At least. So you have to be aware of that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And say it again. Did you add? Uh, had you worked with them before, or you just contacted them no. out of the blue? How do did you identify them? Yeah. <laughs> That that's uh uh for example I I always try this 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 is not the first time I applied it, it was the fourth time I applied for a cooperation call I I tried for example for Coimbra Group before I tried for um uh one that is specifically from Italian universities before so what I do I I, I follow their access and I always get the, the news of cooperation calls. So when I see some calls that are uh, that are I'm I'm on the on the requirements, I look for the for the, the the requirements of the call and I try to look for the partners in the country. For example, I wanted to to improve my abilities in metagenomics and microbiomics related to symbiotic bacteria. So uh, I went to the internet and I looked for papers that people who publish in this topic. Uh, in Austria. So I looked for papers in, in symbiotics and bacteria in Austria. So then I, I, I looked at, the, at the, which university they were uh, and looked for the contact uh, or, uh, email or telephone of them and send email to them. So usually what I do is I look for publications in the field I want to work and then uh, I look for their contacts uh, and try to contact them by email. Sometimes, for example, uh, in the Coimbra group, uh, first up, them. I contact many professors in, in different universities, and uh, one of them reply in the same day. The other reply like four weeks. So it, you have to be sometimes you you have to be a little bit uh, assertive. Like you have to send to more to one person, and then you see if they reply in time. Yeah. Of course, this is a good strategy. You have first to try. And then yeah. you just, if it doesn't work, you try again with somebody else. That's important yes. to be. Yeah, to keep usually I, I wait like a few days. And uh, if nobody replies, I, I send you another person in the field I want. So I, I usually, usually uh, select like three or four people that would be, would fit my, my criteria for working partner and then I sent uh, this is the best one I want it's, I didn't get a reply I sent you the second one I sent you the third I wait like two three days uh, working days and then if they don't reply I if they reply after you can always say okay sorry uh, I already got a positive reply you, people are not not very they will not feel 
bad if you you say okay I, I already got a reply from the professor nobody will you'll be mad of, at you if you do that of course so don't be shy uh, Leonardo yeah. could you reply could you remember us the criteria so people need uh, to get a PhD with no more than um, 10 years of experience right Yes, at the end of the at the sub course proposal submission, you have to have maximum ten years of of PhD completion. So, are there if exceptions? You submit, no, for the the, okay. the call, no, it's it's it's, okay. it's ten years. Strict. So, if it's the ten year December six, you have to have uh, defended your PhD maximum December 7, 10 years ago. Yeah, Perfect. when you submit, not when you go, when you submit the proposal. Yeah. Okay, and then you need to be currently working in a research institution in one of the target countries, right? Yes, uh, it's important. They say that this is a tricky part. You have to have the, the, the affiliation valid until you arrive there. That, that's one tricky part. So if you, you submit in December, but you probably will travel in August, September, or January of uh, 2024. So your affiliation has to be valid until there. Affiliation is not a working contract, okay? It's, for example, if you are working, sometimes you are a, a voluntary postdoc, but you have some link to the university that some has, yeah, the, 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 your dean or something, it's, it's, it's vowing for you, for example, that you have the, the link with them, yeah? Okay, so it's not necessarily be a postdoc, you can be a researcher, a professor, but you need an affiliation with a, uh, an institution yes. in the target countries. Good, thank you. Uh, what about the elements, the, the, the letter of invitation from the host needs to, to, to have? They have a model, right? So a model of the host, yeah, at the JASH website, I didn't show you, but they have a model for the host uh, institution letter, and they have a model for the home institution for the dean to sign. You just have to fill it and send to the dean. And also the host institution, uh, uh, the host institution, it's uh, they have like a three or four questions that are very similar to the proposal, the questions in the proposal. After you prepare the proposal, you can just adapt for the host institution uh, form. Okay, perfect, Omar. So this was the the answer to your question. Um, what about the payments you said you received? There is a monthly payment. It was enough to cover your expenses, but uh, what about if you traveled with your family, for example? Uh, no, they they only cover the the travel ticket as reimbursement for the the fellow. So. They you cover your 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 travel ticket from your home home city to there. You just have to present the the, the flight tickets and the the receipt. And they and when you arrive, both ways. For for example, if I buy from San Luis to Vienna and then Vienna to San Luis, when I arrived at at Graz, they will reimburse me all the travel tickets, not just the the first part. Uh, the fellowship they will pay uh, in monthly installments. So they will pay the first month, then the second month, then the third month of in my case three months and uh, uh, it's a flat rate it doesn't depends on the city it's 2700 euros for each month so it, it, they don't have additional for family or anything it's just uh, this this uh, uh, support they give okay but 2700 it's 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 uh, good you can pay for for a, a, a rent apartment for two people for example and uh, they, of course, if it's three people or four people, we'll get a little bit uh, short, but two people or maximum one, one, one uh, couple and a kid, maybe it's, it's enough, depending on the city in, in Austria. Perfect. And uh, Leonardo, do you know any program for researchers that have more than 10 years of experience after their PhD? At at Austria specifically, um, I'm, I'm not sure. I, I know, for example, in the ERC programs they have uh, they have uh, experience. Also, I know that in German DAD they have some programs that are for experienced research. Also, in in um, Max Planck Institute they have some fellowship for more experience. They have a fellowship for early stage for experience and senior researchers. 
they have different uh, types of, of, of fellowships depending on the on the career stage. But for us, I'm not sure. I only know the Josh program that has this limit of 10 years. Great. So if you are looking for opportunities and you don't um, match with the criteria of this specific JESH call, you can also look under your access jobs and funding portal and then you explain the, your criteria, which are I am very experienced or I don't have a PhD yet. And then you look at what is proposed. You can also contact us at your access Slack and we try to help you identify why, uh, what are the opportunities for you. Okay, so this is true for both the experienced researchers, but also people who don't have a PhD yet or want a short term stay in, in Europe within their PhD. Okay. Um, Leonardo, somebody is interested in your bank account in Austria. Where do you have any tip regarding the bank? Was it easy to open no, it? No, uh, uh, as I said, ah. I will. I still didn't travel. I travel in February. Yeah. Originally, I was going to travel in September. I had some family issues, so I had to postpone. And I'm going to February to get a little bit cold in Austria, <laughs> and. Uh, so that's why uh, I was supposed to be already to already returning from the, this time of the year, but uh, they said uh, that's important. I saw some people asking about the the visa. That's why I, they asked me to to get the visa because I, I talked to Thaisa from the embassy and I told her that I would stay only ninety days and usually uh, as a Brazilian I don't need visa for ninety days in Europe. But she told me that for the bank account when you get in Austria if you don't have the visa it's not easy to open the bank account. And as you can only receive the fellowship in an Austrian bank account, it's, in, it's important to get the visa, even if you stay one month or two months. That's what they, they explain in the embassy. Okay, thank you for explaining. Um, mm -hmm. We had a question from Guillermo about the topic, if it may be interesting for the Austrian uh, institution to do um, a research on COVID, you have to contact the institutions there and the PIs to discuss your project. Don't be shy, you try to identify people in your bibliographies, people you've worked with, you ask your colleagues for recommendation, and then you explain your project. So the, only the PIs from Austria will be able to, to answer this question. And then finally, I would like to remind all of you that it's also possible to receive people from Austria because this call is both for you, Latin American and, and Cuban researchers to go to Austria, but also the Austrian can travel outside of Europe and then they can uh, spend some months in your laboratories, which is always very useful. So are you considering this opportunity, uh, Leonardo? Yeah, I would say that uh, for people that already have more than 10 years, it's also a good opportunity to, to uh, get international cooperation and to interact more so you can open doors to international calls. So if you don't you have more than 10 years, you could contact someone, a group that's interesting to you and ask them if they don't want to send a postdoc or, or a PI that has less than 10 years. So they could come to your place, stay one to six months working, and uh, then you could improve this cooperation. And then it opens doors for other calls, for future calls. So it's, it's very interesting. Uh, just Diego asked about the, the thing now, should perform during 2023? Uh, no, for example, my case, I submitted in May, 2021, I was approved in December. I received the confirmation in January of 22, and they said that I should start from February 22 to March 2023. So we have more or less one year between the the exception of the of the fellowship to implement. So in my case, I had to be there until 28th of first of March of 2023. I was, as I said, planning September this year, but I had some problems. I had to postpone to February. But you have more or less one year after 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 receiving the fellowship to to go there. Good. Thanks a lot, Leonardo. It was very very useful, mm -hmm. and your practical tip were very relevant. If you mm -hmm. have any other question, please read the call on the um, website of the funding agency, 
and us do not hesitate to ask them they were very helpful for leonardo and i'm sure they will be helpful for you too um so these leonardo thanks a lot for your time and your experience mm -hmm. and this webinar is part of a series uh, of by your access lag on european member state funding so you can check on your access like social media for the next uh, editions i if you have a final word leonardo the floor is yours uh, no, just thank you everybody for the attention. And uh, as uh, Charlotte said, you you have to be, don't be shy. You have to try. And uh, as I said, I tried like four, five calls from 2021 to this year and I got one approved. It was very interesting. So if you don't try, you never know. It's it's very important to contact people. And from my experience, the the professors uh, I had replies from professor from from uh, Belgium from Italia in different calls and from Austria everybody was very helpful very kind and I always get good replies and they were very interested in cooperation have cooperation with us from Latin America okay good thank you for your words Leonardo and have all a wonderful afternoon. Bye bye. Yeah, you too. I, I will send you after the presentation of the links. Okay, so you can Thank share you. with everybody. Okay. Good. Bye bye. We people. will send Thanks. you it by email next week. Bye.